thought it'd be a good idea to do a virtual in-service on some of our dialysis catheters we offer at MedComp. These days with COVID going on, you can't really get into hospitals and physicians are being forced to uh, use catheters they may not be familiar with. And I know from years of experience in the IR lab, it's very important to uh, be familiar with the tools that you're using in the IR lab or the operating room. And since I can't get in there, I thought it'd be great to put up some videos on YouTube to kind of go over these catheters. Uh, hopefully it, many people will find it helpful. The first one I wanted to talk about is the split cath from MedComp. This is a great catheter. It's been around a long time, 20 years. Uh, was one of the first ones on the market that utilized the single tunnel and a single venotomy site. Before this, we used to place Tessio catheters, which were two separate lumens, red and blue, two separate tunnels, two separate IJ sticks. Uh, they're still around. We still make those. They're used sparingly for patients that may uh, not be able to get a fistula or graft. They're a great option because they really last a long time. Uh, the split cath is definitely in second place after the Tessio. It was designed after a Tessio. We figured, how can we make a catheter that has two independent internal lumens, but yet one tunnel and one IJ stick. So the way they did it was to figure out a way to bond the polyurethane catheter together on the distal end, and it can be split like kind of like a banana peel. You can split it to the customized split length that you desire based on what you're seeing on your fluoroscope. Patient anatomy can be different. The heart can lean different ways. There can be scar tissue or cliffs inside there. This gives you a lot of options. It comes in most commonly as a 14 French, although in my years we went with 16 French, and that is by far the best performing uh, long-term dialysis catheter next to a Tessio. 14 French is also a very good performing catheter, and we also sell some sizes in 10 French. Uh, the lengths go all the way up to 55 for femoral, femoral applications. This is what the kit looks like when you open it up. You'll see many of the things you're familiar to seeing in a dialysis catheter uh, basic kit. You have a 038 J tip wire. It does have markers on it if you need them. Some people like to have markers. The other nice thing is it's either a straight, like an LLT tip, or a J tip on the opposite end comes with your 18 gauge needle which again most people may not use they may use a micropuncture kit comes with two caps a scalpel a tegaderm you have your uh, tunneler with the plastic nose cone on it I'll go over that in a few minutes and then most importantly is our valved peel away sheath and this valve in here uh, eliminates or minimizes the risk of air embolus during insertion. In the old days, we didn't have valves, so you just had to either put the head down or be really quick and hope you don't hear any gurgling sounds. This really makes it a lot easier for physicians and safer for patients. These uh, valve sheaths are pretty common nowadays, but it is a great thing to have. This is what the catheter looks like coming out of the package. You'll notice there's a uh, red and blue lumen that you're very familiar with, with whatever catheter you're using. Thing that's interesting with this catheter is uh, you'll notice the red lumen has a plastic stiff plastic uh, fast track stylet and this is for your catheter exchanges so if you're going to be doing a catheter exchange you're going to leave this in place screw it on tight here at the hub and do not clamp the red clamp as it says on the tag there's a tag here to remind your staff do not clamp it if you clamp it we will kink that hard plastic stylet and then you'll have a hard time feeding your guide wire through there you will flush and lock the blue and you can flush the stylet so it slides over the glide wire better i do recommend uh, a stiff glide is usually the best cat uh, best wire for uh, your catheter exchanges and then moving on towards the tip you can see that this catheter has a rotating suture wing which is also a really nice feature because you can fine tune it a little bit you don't have to cut the sutures to, to move it if they're on dialysis at, you know some point down the line and you're having a little bit of a sporadic issue based on anatomy or how they're 
sitting or laying in dialysis, you can rotate this without having to cut stitches. Not too often that you need to really mess with these catheters. As I said, they, they perform very well and very minimal tissue growth compared to other catheters. If you move down the catheter here, you can see that there's a spot that says do not split beyond this point. That's important to remember because this catheter will split as far as you want it to, pretty much down to the cuff if you forced it to, but the, you don't want to do that because if you go past this line, then you have uh, a split between the lumens, and theoretically this line here could be out of the venotomy and into the tunnel. So if you do that, now you have communication from your bloodstream to your tunnel, and blood can leak through, and then you end up with oozing at the, at the uh, insertion site, and you know, the messy bandages, and you just don't want to go past the line. Most people will go almost halfway or halfway. As you can see here, this is a perfect example of if you can see the line here and then the split is to there. That's about where people put it. Uh, if you're doing an exchange, when you take it out of the package, you'll notice it's probably split to about there. So this one's already been split to the desired length. And uh, if, as I said right now, if we're talking about doing an, ex an exchange, the stylet is locked and flushed and the clamp is not clamped as I mentioned and then you're gonna take this stiffening stylet and you'll see there's a side hole medial side hole right there you're gonna take the stylet without kinking it and insert it through the catheter through the uh, distal lumen so it's coming out of the proximal going through the side hole and out the distal so now the whole thing is on that stylet we used to call that a weave in the lab so called the split cath weave so now you would have your stiff glide through the existing catheter down and uh, usually if you can get it down into the IVC so you have plenty of purchase with your wire and then you're going to loosen the Dacron cuff on the non-functioning catheter and exchange that out and then go ahead and feed this on your on your uh, stiff glide through the track you can twist it turn it do whatever you got to do to get it up and over the clavicle into the venotomy site and down into the right atrium once it's in place, you just go ahead and remove the stiffening stylet and clamp the red lumen so you don't bleed. And then inside, you'll see what you'll have is two independent lumens for dialysis. And this is bench, you know, it's bench tested right now, so it's kind of a little stiff. When it gets inside the patient, this Triniflex material gets very soft. So that even helps more with uh, catheter motion and vibration during blood flow you know the turbulence and the heart beating all that kind of allows these to kind of move around a little bit and minimize fibrin tissue growth so it's not just a stiff step tip catheter like that sitting inside the patient which can get sucked up against anatomy or a cliff or a scar tissue or whatever might be going on this catheter is going to be freely floating two separate lumens that can move around with blood flow really makes it perform well and last a long time for your patients. Uh, that uh, Triniflex material is both iodine and alcohol resistant and provides strength, biocompatibility, and kink resistance. If you're going to be doing a fresh catheter placement, which is the most common time you're going to be placing one of these, is just a fresh placement for a dialysis patient that needs dialysis. So when you take it out of the package you're gonna again it's gonna look like that you're just gonna get this stiffening stylet out of the way because you don't need it for fresh placements flush and lock both lumens move on down to the tip again it'll come out about like that you're gonna split it to the desired length two-thirds of the way halfway whatever you desire and then you're gonna take your tunneling or a tunneling device it's designed to go in the distal tip of the catheter like that and then this plastic nose cone slides over the proximal tip to protect it during the tunneling and allow everything to pull through in unison so this goes like that and then you're going to go ahead and insert this tunnel device in the insertion site and pull it through tunnel through the tissues up to the venotomy site the incision at the at the ij uh, unless you're doing this femoral or lumbar as well which we sell sizes all the way up to 55 centimeters for femoral or trans lumbar. We also sell trans lumbar trays. But in this case, we'll say we're going through the chest wall up to the IJ venotomy site. You're going to pull this through, take off this tunneler, 
and you're gonna have your face in the in the IJ and you just go ahead and insert these through that don't have to hurry because it's got a valve you don't have to worry about the air embolus once this is in place you peel away the peel away and again inside you have two independent lumens floating around providing great dialysis treatments for your patient and that is the split cath from medcomp as I said, it's one of the best performing catheters out there. I have a lot of experience with it. Hopefully you find this video helpful. I know nowadays there's people, you know, being used or being forced to use catheters that they may not be familiar with due to the COVID crisis. Uh, whatever products you can get in stock, you may be used to just using step tips, which are pretty straightforward. The split tip is also easy to use. You just got to know how to use it. You got to know a few of the little intricacies of the catheter, which I just went over. Uh, but I know it's better to see a demonstration of it before you have to actually place one. So hopefully this video is helpful to somebody out there that might be placing one for the first time.